Now about time to see what we've got in here. I know what this is, I think. Yeah, maybe this one. I've also got a big piece of test gear which we're going to shove on the bench at the end of this, right? So stick around and find out what that is. It's not in a box, it's something I picked up locally, so it's going to be going on the bench. Hopefully I can fit it on here, it's quite big. And a piece of test gear which I'm going to be repairing, so find out what that is later on. Right now we're going to go through these things, smallest to largest. There you go, it's a bunch of thermistors. 1k up to 100k. I've got these for a project I need to work on. There's a modification I need to do to something, I need a thermistor to do it. I didn't have any. Now I do. If you don't know what a thermistor is, it's basically a variable resistor, so with temperature it changes resistance. Negative temperature coefficient thermistors. You also get PTCs, which are positive temperature coefficient. And the NTC versus PTC determine whether it goes up in value or down in value relative to temperature. Negative means it goes down in value as the temperature increases. Coaxial cables with end connectors. This is a short one, so 50 centimeters, and this one probably about a meter or so. I've got various bits of equipment here which are end connected. Well, I don't actually have any coax cables with end connectors on. I think I've got one which converts them into something else, and I've got some adapters and what have you. I've been using different types like BNCs or PL259s, and I thought, well, I should probably get some cables with end connectors on them. There's a reason for that too, which I'll explain later on. But uh, and also another T. I don't have like angles and stuff, I don't think I need tea, so I've got one in too. Starship Picard, season two. We can't get this here, not streaming anyway, it's not streamed here, we can't get it. At least, not that I'm aware of. Not with the systems I've got available to me, I should say. So. I have to buy the DVDs or Blu-rays in this case. I've already got season one, I've already watched that one. This is season two. Yes, and he's in a bit behind. This had to come from overseas as well. Couldn't get it locally. You have a slightly squashed box, I think it is anyway. <laughs> See that it's badly wrapped, but yeah, I think it's slightly squashed. AC system re rejuvenator. I got this thing in, might need it for my car to uh, re lubricate the AC system and stuff on it. Maybe someone that's a bit more experienced in AC stuff will tell me if these are a waste of time or not. It's only a little small can. I suppose let's add it to lubricate the system and what have you. I don't know much about it, but I was in a bit of a phase going through AC system stuff for my cars. You've probably seen with the other mail bags I bought. Lots of stuff. I thought I could get this in case I needed it. So it's like a leak stop stuff as well, so if I had a leak you could put this in to try and stop leaks. As long as it's small leaks. But I think generally putting anything in the AC system is not a great idea anyway, but if you've got a leak then what have you got to lose? Like that. Who says a PCB is not going to cut through cardboard boxes? <coughs> this tape has trouble with. Time, as I you would say. We'll take conditioner stuff for soil Chinese, and there's no instructions on the back, just that. Pretty short soil, and it says one litre. I don't know, it's, it, feels, it feels like it's only about this full. I don't think that's a litre. Last box before we get into the test gear. Yeah, PCBs. Oh, I feel like I've been ripped off. I didn't get any gifts. I don't get any pens, no stickers, no free rulers. This is weird. I normally get those things every single time. <laughs> Interesting. So anyway, these are sponsored. These are PCB items from PC Way. So there's a circuit board there. There's another one here. Let's open these up. I'll show you what they are. Hmm. 
really basic little board this one just an adapter board I basically uh, have some units which are these little modules which I've got sitting around here so much and the idea is I can use this to adapt between the programmer and the lower modules to make them easier to program so to mess around with jumper cables so here's a programmer which will go on this side should plug in the board like so I'm going to put a header on this, female header and then you've got a lower module which will go on this side like that, also be on a female header this will be for demonstration obviously that will connect together, I've got some resistors in here as well just to act as buffers and voltage reducers because this is a 3.3 volt kind of really, I mean they do run on 5 as well but I don't recommend it so it can be connected up like this and then I can just program it with the software on a PC now what I've been doing so far is once I've got program modules in, in a unit is I can read that programming off that module using the unit it's plugged into unplug it, plug a new one in and then write that program back onto a new one so I'm basically cloning the, the devices which is a nice quick and easy way of doing it without using any software it just using the firmware on devices that these are used in I can just reload it and copy it onto a new one just like that, it's cloning all the time but sometimes you want to program them from scratch and I've been using basically some little DuPont jumper cables on a breadboard to do that, it's a bit of a pain and I, I really wasn't liking that so I thought I'd design these little modules to do this and make it easier to program them what I'll probably do is get one of these take the headers off it, put some straight headers on or something and piggyback it on the boards directly and then I'm going to put a female header on this side so you can just plug the balls in, program them, off you go. Easy. So yeah, I've got a bunch of these balls, because now I can just build a few of them up and just leave them laying around and put in different places. And then if I lose one, it doesn't really matter too much because I've got more. Because I'm about to lose them. Look at the size of these things. I'm going to lose them. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to have them scattered around different places. And these balls, which I'm going to get out as well. There's going to be a video about this as a proper review video. I'll probably include these as well as part of it. But this is a ball designed for... The Pistesca is sitting over here. It's been sitting here for a while now. You may have seen in the background of most of my videos. My Mobile One stuff. This HP 3400A. It's got a module right here. Hopefully, this will replace it. So, this is the A6 board out of the 3400A. And this one's from the 60s. This is a really old module, this one. Yeah, 1965 is when this thing was made. And I've recapped it all. I've re replaced the resistors, stuff like that on it. I've been diagnosing this thing, trying to troubleshoot this unit and I think I know what's wrong with it, I'm not going to spoil it because I'm doing a video on the repair of this thing. It's not working yet. <laughs> I'll say that much. And I thought, well, the later versions of these things, they have a different PCB in them. And I've basically got that PCB design, I've modernised it a little bit. Just a little bit, not a lot. I still use a lot of the original components. Not all of them. Resistors and transistors have changed to modern ones. Service mount and one of the ICs. But the idea is that this will replace this board. And I'll build this up in a video in the future. As part of the repair and also as a sponsorship from PCB Bay. I don't even know if it's going to work, I've got no idea. It's the first time I've done a ball edge connector, and it looks like it's correct. That's looking alright. I reckon it'll work. Excellent. Now, the piece of test gear, which I'll try and squeeze into my desk. I'll be back in a minute. And here's the piece of test gear I was teasing you about at the beginning of the video. It's an old HP signal generator. It's the 8672A, 2 to 18 gigahertz. And I didn't actually have anything go this high. I've got stuff when you go up to 2 gigahertz or just over. I think my CMU 200 can do 2.7 or something, I think it is. And my Marconi can do 1 gigahertz. This covers that upper end, which I have wanted to test before with some bits of gear. You know, when I'm trying to validate function and that sort of stuff. But I didn't actually have anything to generate frequencies that high. And I managed to pick this up locally from a guy called Gavin, who's very generously met us well, over halfway in Auckland. He had to drive a couple of hours to get down to us. This needs a bit of loving, which is always the way with bits of gear which I pick up. That's always the intention. This will be an interesting project video coming up soon. Well, soon-ish. I've got a few things to do. I've got a queue of them now, which is great. I've been struggling to find bits of gear to work on. I managed to find eight things so far. I've got one more thing waiting to arrive. I'm a bit concerned about that one though, because it's been sitting in a consolidation centre in the US for the past month. It hasn't moved. It took two days to get there, and then it hasn't moved. So I don't know what's happening with that. Hopefully it arrives here eventually. So we'll be doing a project on this. This definitely has some faults. Um, it's got some capacitors strapped to it here, which are ones which got taken out of it. Because it's got bad caps. It will need fully recapping and all sorts of stuff. Bit of a beast. It's quite chunky, but barely fits on my desk. You can see I've got it half off the desk here. 
This isn't the sort of thing you'd use every day. Well, maybe not for me anyway. Some people might do. This would be putting out in my other lab from doing RF work and maybe brought in here when I need to test things. Like for example, I've got a HP 5342A 18 gigahertz frequency counter. I had a few of them. I've done some repairs on those in the past and done vi numerous videos on them. Wanting to test those things with the higher frequencies would have been nice, but I couldn't do it because I didn't have something which generate those higher frequencies because they also got to 18 gigahertz. Once this is functional, then I can use this for those kinds of tests. And other things as well. You know, sometimes you need to inject frequencies which are quite high. And, uh, yeah. Check out the videos down below, my repair videos and that sort of stuff. Check out the merch if you're interested in merch. I'm here because you broke something. I've got other ones. Reefer Cat. Don't forget to subscribe over there. Patreon link over there if you want to help me buy things like this to do videos about. Bye.